Hello everyone, I'm your host with the most is 8 Second Gaming and in today's video we are going to be talking about synergizing with your team in Apex. Team synergy is an absolute must if you really want to climb so don't worry I'm here to help you out. But if you guys are really looking to take your Apex skill to the next level then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there we have top level coaches creating the best most highly informative guides to make you the best player you could possibly be. We have legend guides, gun guides, vod reviews, positioning guides, aim guides and much much more so click the link in the description pick yourself up a membership and start to improve today but okay let's jump into things now and start off with tip number one effective communication now communication is always going to be a very key piece in apex after all it is a team game and i know that some people do have some stuff like they have social anxiety they might have a loud house there is some stuff that is going on that does prevent them from using their microphone but that does not prevent you from communication either apex has a fantastic ping system you can ping loot you can ping enemy positions you can even ping some tactical plans if you want to defend a spot ping it if you want to attack a spot ping it if you want to go somewhere ping it i can't tell you how many times i've been playing especially in solo queue and people just don't ping stuff and this is also a very good point even if you do have a microphone and you're talking to your team you still have to give clear call outs if you're talking about a team in a specific area don't just say hey there's a team over there use the ping system as well as your voice the more information you can give to your team in less time the better instead of giving them a long drawn out map telling them exactly where they are in 50,000 details just say hey there's a team over here and ping it keeping comms clear concise and to the point is a very effective tool when you're actually looking to climb an apex because this might sound a little bit weird but less is actually more in some certain situations if you're getting into a fight you want to be able to give the call outs that you need to give to help your teammate but you don't want to be clogging comms up if you're giving your entire life story about the fight and somebody's trying to give more information like hey somebody's flanking or hey somebody's really really low but you're just going on and on and on nobody's really gonna be able to hear you get the information out and then stop talking and I'm just gonna keep piling on to this because audio in apex is still pretty bad they have done some good work with it I will give respawn that it is a little bit better but if you are droning on and on and on people aren't gonna be able to hear any footsteps and that can lead to them getting killed because there's just somebody behind them one clipping them a really good way to fix this is to just cut out filler words instead of saying hey there's a wraith over there I tagged her 75 blue just take the filler words out just say wraith 75 blue that's all you really need to say everyone got the same amount of information in just less time but now let's move into tip number two and this is going to be positioning and flanking now everyone on the team does have a job the entry fragger the secondary the support they have jobs and each one of those jobs does have a specific position when it comes to the fight knowing and understanding your character's positioning in the fight because of the role that they're playing is very crucial to synergies because if you are stepping on each other's toes in a fight by being out of position then you can cause issues for example if you are a support character you're supposed to be in the back you're supposed to be the anchor the back line the rock for your team if you're running full steam ahead in front of the group running into the enemy team you are not in position you're not letting the entry fragger do their job and you're probably going to end up having to blow an ability that you shouldn't have had to blow in order to save yourself like the amount of times that i've seen gibraltars just try to entry frag and then have to use their dome and then get caught out because they don't have it is insane understand your legend's job and then start to position around that and if you guys don't understand what legends fall into what jobs and then go check out the video that we have on this channel explaining what legends fall into what roles you'll understand a lot more about what roles the legends do fall into because some of them do fall into multiple ones but you know that's on the other video moving forward though there is such thing as flanking and taking off angles and you need to understand which legends can do this effectively because again if you're using the legend wrong and not using a legend that should be taking off angles you can get caught out and cause your team to lose fights because you don't actually have the synergy that you need and that can cause your team to lose fights if you're playing a character like Lifeline, she is not a character that takes off angles. Let a character like Loba or Newcastle or Pathfinder, somebody that is supposed to be taking off angles, take the off angles. These characters are the ones that can absolutely abuse the movement that their characters offer, not only taking great off angles, but also they can lure enemy teams into a false sense of security. They think, hey, this person split, they're easily single outable, and they might even throw themselves out of positions to try to kill that character, but because of the high mobility, they can just get back to you, and now the enemy team is out of position and just free kills. So yes, understanding where you need to be in a fight 
and when you can start to take off angles is massive for team synergy. But now let's move into tip number three, and this is for all you Octane mains, resources and sharing them. Everyone on the team needs stuff. You cannot be hogging everything to yourself. If your inventory has like eight batteries in it, drop some for your teammates because they need it as well. And I know that some people are probably going to be sitting there and saying, well, I solo queue. I'm keeping the batteries for myself. I'm the only one I can trust. And yes, that is true. But if you're in a fight and your teammate gets ripped and all their armor is gone and they're sitting there popping shield cell after shield cell after shield cell and not helping in the fight, causing you to die because you didn't want to give them a battery, that's not actually on them. That's on you. Because you didn't share any resources with your team, you caused them to be out of the fight for an extended amount of time, allowing the enemy team to take advantage of that and absolutely dominate you. The easy the easiest way to get around this is just ask your team, hey, I've got some extra batteries, does anybody need some? Or if there's a replicator nearby, just say, yo, I've got some extra crafting materials, does anybody want me to craft them a battery? Or hey, do you need a bigger backpack? I can craft this, I can craft that. Ask your team, this goes back to tip number one and communication. Even this can be communication with your team. Know what they need, understand what you can get for them, and then start to work together. This is going to sound like a broken record here, but Apex is a team game. You need to be working with your team, and I've even seen this in three stacks, so don't think you guys are safe either. I jump around on Twitch a lot to kind of see what people in lower ranks are struggling with to help make these videos a little bit more targeted towards them, and the amount of times that I don't see people talking about the types of heals that they have is absolutely insane. Go watch any pro player when they're in scrims or in a tournament, and as they're leaving their POI, they typically say how many heals they have. They'll say how many shield cells, they say how many batteries, they say how many med kits. They share resources because then everyone's on the same playing field, and they can actually help their team. But now, let's move into tip number four, and this is coordinate your ability usage. Most of the characters in Apex can synergize with one another. If you take a look at somebody like Horizon, for example, she can absolutely dominate teams with her ultimate paired with a caustic ultimate or even just one of his gas barrels. But I see way, way, way too many people not coordinate their abilities. They just would, you know, gravity lift up, throw the horizon out, throw some grenades, and then the fight's still going on because they just didn't wait half a second for the caustic to be in position to wombo combo with them. Synergizing as a team with legend combo combinations is so strong in this game. And there's so many different examples. Bangalore Smoke with Bloodhound Ultimate, that is super strong. Horizon Alt, Caustic Alt, super strong. Horizon Alt, Fuse Tactical, really strong. If you throw a Fuse Alt on top of you and your team and then toss a Gibraltar bubble so that people can't actually push into the bubble, that can give you a lot of time to heal up. And sometimes it doesn't even take a second Legend's ability to actually combo off of. Sometimes you can just be interacting with something in the world. Like if you're going to scan one of like the ring consoles to get some knowledge or even scan one of the survey beacons to see where everybody is, have Bangalore smoke you, have Gibraltar throw his dome down on top of you, have Newcastle throw his shield in front of you and then body block the other side. There's so many different ways that Legends abilities can work together with you and your team as long as you're able to actually properly, hey guess what, communicate it and work as a team. Now you guys have probably already figured this out for yourself, but a lot of this just boils back to communication. And I'm going to keep going back to that because again, I see a lot of people not communicate. Now starting to understand how abilities synergize with each other does take a little bit of play time. You are going to have to understand the abilities that you have and the abilities that your teammates have. And it's a little bit harder in solo queue because sometimes they don't talk. But as long as you're able to ping stuff or accurately communicate stuff because you have a microphone, then you can start to really synergize with them because you can count stuff down and you can kind of lay a plan out. The only constant in your game is going to be you. So you have to be reliable enough to actually pull off the synergies. And sometimes all it takes is just asking, hey, I'm going to scan this beacon. Can you smoke me? But now let's move into tip number five. And this is going to be teamwork in reviving. Now, this is one that I'm hopefully going to be catching some people off guard with, because why would you need to synergize when reviving? It seems pretty straightforward, right? Well, there are some things that can be learned with this. Reviving is one of the most important things in a fight. And in order to do it safely, you need to be synergizing with your team. You need to understand where the enemy team is going to be pushing from. You need to understand how much time you have, and you need to understand how much time you can either buy your teammate to revive or how much time they can buy you. You can synergize some combos potentially, like the Gibraltar bubble fuse alt that I talked about. You can potentially do that. Or maybe you have a lifeline on your team so she can combat res and you can both do it. Or maybe the person that has the better revive is already locked in combat and you're going to have to do the revive. You have to have enough of kind of a heads up play in order to understand what your team is doing and what you need to be doing to synergize and work with each other. Like for example, we did an educational commentary a couple videos ago where I showed you guys how to win hectic endgame circles. And in that example, my lifeline is chasing down a rat while we did have a teammate downed. 
Instead of me going with that lifeline to chase that person down, I just instead revived the teammate, even though lifeline has a much better revive than me because I was playing Bangalore. But because the lifeline was already doing a specific job, you can't pull her off of that because that's going to lead to some mis synergization. Is synergization a word? I don't know. But if I tell her to go get the revive as she's turning around, maybe that rat turns back on her and one clips her as she's running away. But as long as she's able to keep that person running and actually keep me safe while I'm reviving, there's no reason that I can't do that. It's small things like that that really help you work as a cohesive ball with your team. And once you can actually do that, then you will see that climbing is so much easier and getting better at Apex is so much easier because you're going to be a lot better with your team and you're going to be winning a lot more fights and actually being able to climb. But let me know your favorite tip to synergize with your teammates in the comments down below. And if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest, greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thanks all for watching. Once again, I'm taking game and I'll see you guys in the next one.